Davey, a nil nil draw with Hearts here at the Tony Mac. Uh, point each a fair result? Probably, yeah. And then I look at it, both managers, myself and Robbie, are probably looking at it. We've lost these games previously. You can lose these by a scrappy 1 0. I think it was a difficult game to play in terms of the conditions. I don't think probably sitting in the stand you get a real reflection of the conditions. We're unlucky not to take the lead by Stephen Bradley's effort. Um, they're probably unlucky with Shamal's double save. So you probably take your point, take a clean sheet. That's us now, I think, six unbeaten, three wins, three draws. So, ah, reflection, probably a fair result. Just how impressed have you been with the defensive display? Of course, you've got now Morgan Boyce has kind of slotted into that centre-back role, displaced Ayo Obli. How impressive has not only he, but Jack Fitzwater and the, the rest of the back line been? I think um, Jack came out of the team also for a couple of weeks. Um, but for me, there's now genuine competition in the centre-half area. And I think that's helping the boys with their displays also. So you know you've got to be at it every game or you're given the opportunity for somebody to come in and take that jersey. Big Ayo was probably a wee bit unlucky, if I'm honest, that he came in and the game that he came out, it swung it in terms of, I was probably looking for a wee bit more balance in the left-hand side. I felt that it was teams coming, they were pressing us and they were putting their left centre back on their left foot and their right foot at that point. It was curling us in the press slightly. Um, in terms of his progressing the ball into the mid third or the final third. So I felt I needed a wee bit of balance at left centre half. So I always a wee bit unlucky to come out of the teams. Um, but since Morgan's been in the boys, the boys are unbeaten. So it's very, very difficult for me to change the team. But I do believe I'm getting the best from the players now. Because of the healthy competition we've got in the squad. There's a squad, there's 23 seats in the first team changing room. Take three keepers out of that. There's genuinely 20 players that I could pick two teams from quite easily and I'd be more than happy with the players on the park. Just in terms of like the again the, the defensive display from both sides, the chances were very much few and far between. Do you think... That, what I'm trying to say... Okay. Trying to think, no, <laughs> was... Are you still happy with the kind of the creativity that the, the, the team yeah. showed, even despite yeah. not being able to? Yeah, I think they had a couple of contacts in their box. I think it might have been Stephen Bradley it could have done a wee bit better with a header. I think Stephen Kelly, but the wind plays a part in the movement of the ball. I think it was Nicky Devlin's cross, um, and then we had a couple of boy cutbacks in the 18-yard box. It never quite fell for us against St Johnson. We scored two of them. Uh, and then you've got Stephen Bradley's effort and you've got Morgan Boyce's effort as well. Morgan stepped in really well. Um, so, nah, nah, I've not got a problem with that. I think you're playing, you're playing the third best team in Scotland. Let's not kid anybody on. Their budget's a good bit ahead of ours. I'm going to say their budget's eight, nine times our budget. And I think they're a fantastically well-run club on and off the park. I think Robbie and Joe's done a great job, Robbie and his staff. So, to come here over the course of the season we've took five points for Hearts. Hearts have taken two from ourselves. So it's an advantage of three. Which I think, do you know what? I think that's fantastic for the players and staff in this building to be able to do that. I know it's probably something Robbie will be looking at and he's a little bit disappointed from. But when you look at the last minute goal at Tynecastle that take two points from us, we should be sitting here maybe with seven points on the table for Hearts. So nah, I, I think you've got to reflect on it and I think we could have stole it today, they could have stole it today, over the piece no, no, clean sheet point, ah, probably take it probably take it And just finally looking ahead to Wednesday night travel through to Celtic Park, a really difficult fixture, how would you kind of uh, assess things going into that one? Tell you in half an hour when I watch the Dungeon 80 game, <laughs> no I'm only really kidding listen we'll not go into it any different to how we went into it previously, I think I'm sitting talking about budgets there um, Hearts probably six two eight times your budget, Celtic 40, 40 times your budget, and I'll say this on ours, I wouldn't say it publicly on Sky Television and BBC because I think it's a wee bit no disrespectful because Celtic have earned the right, earned the right to spend that money in players through their success. Um, but you talk about <laughs> points per pound, and I think collectively every year in the league we win it if you were to split the points into pounds. Divide that by the budget, I think we'd win the league every single season. So we'll go to Parkhead, we'll give it, we're all but We're up against the best team in Scotland. For me, Ange has done an incredible job. 
His recruitment's been fantastic. He's got them playing a certain style in brandy football. But the budgets help you do that. Of course they do. Of course they do. So I'm under no illusions how hard Wednesday night's going to be. And we need to go there, make a good account ourselves, be competitive within the game, make sure we don't give up cheap goals. But we also need to try and pose an attacking threat. And that's the difficult part, is getting the balance between stopping Celtic scoring and try to um, get an attacking threat yourself on the park. But we've done it before and there's no reason why we can't do it again.